Good morning, all. Welcome. Um, this is March 19th, 2018, Curry County Board of Commissioners meeting. This is today is actually a continuation of the uh, meeting and responsibilities from quite the marathon we had yesterday. Uh, so, Commissioner Gold, we should do a flag salute again, do you think? Sure. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America. America. And, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under god, god indivisible with liberty and justice for all we have in the audience director of human resources julie swift and matt hall from the curry county reporter and uh, port orford news uh, to my right is uh, commissioner sue gold uh, we anticipate council huddle will be here any moment um, and John Jesuit staff uh, to Commissioner Gold's right. Uh, Commissioner Pash, uh, I hear you're feeling a little better each day. Today I am feeling a little bit better, yes. Thank you, good to hear. Um, just a little side note, let's hear for Dollar General. General, we have uh, between them and uh, the Dollar Store, we have three in Curry County. It was racy, who could open up and help the seniors first and Dollar General won that race and they're devoting the first hour of their shopping to senior centers. So I thought that was fun and kind of interesting. Quick report, uh, personally, a real pleasure to really get connected with some of the other county officials uh, in a detailed way. Uh, Commissioner Pash and Gold, we had, uh, we completed or, or ended uh, recessed our meeting yesterday at a little after five o'clock. Uh, Council Huddle worked very hard, uh, Curry elected officials and several department heads. Speak of the devil. Welcome, sir. Hello. I got one. Well, this is the one. Oh, is it the one with better spelling? Hey. <laughs> so just, uh, just a little report here this morning. The president actually with full support of the House and Senate invoked the war powers in Production Act. I think that's the proper term, War Powers and Production Act. And so that, that puts it in the coronavirus in somewhat of a war category. And no, our sons are not going off to be sacrificed in foreign lands, but uh, we're all foot soldiers. And I appreciate the attendance of everyone that's been so dedicated to responding properly and uh, yeah, defeat the coronavirus, which is the enemy. Uh, in China yesterday, no new COVID-19 cases. That's the first day in, these, in this three-month period. Very good news. Uh, sometimes it's hard to, to trust the information that comes out of that country, but South Korea is also doing incredibly well, and our country is following their, their trajectory and their curve. So, uh, Commissioner Pash, do you have anything you want to add this morning? No, it all looked good to me. I read through everything. Uh, there was a couple of typos. Sorry, John, to call you out on that, but there are a couple of typos. Other he, than that, it looked fine. He that, wrote two pages in 12 minutes. Well, it, it is correct. There, there were typos. Uh, Commissioner Pash, uh, I had my assistant, Brenda Starbird, so I was a little bit tardy to this meeting. I was in actually trying to edit the typos, but it looks like, um, ah. Okay. Is this your time to speak, Why aren't you Commissioner, looking at Gold? This, Commissioner Gold? Is this I am. That's the one you just gave me. Oh, there's a, that's a different... Oh, I see it. Good. All right. So there are still some typos on this one. We'll get them fixed, but this is closer. I had my assistant, Brenda Starbird, scan and email this to you, Commissioner Pash, this morning at your work address. Hopefully you can get it. Um, this is basically cleaned up, if, uh, if I could. Certainly. Just explain what's going on. So... Yesterday, we examined a draft uh, rule, and we um, went through it and decided what we would, uh, we discussed what we would uh, propose as our own rule, and this is my uh, work from my notes uh, from that meeting, and I'd just like to go through it. It differs in um, organization from what we received. I tried to eliminate some duplications what we received repeated things over and over and I tried to reorganize it so we had less repetition um, and if you could we'll just go down it one by one we're uh, adopting the rules to address the COVID-19 contingencies um, they're effective backdated to February 
28, 2020, when the first COVID case was found in Oregon. They'll continue through June 30th, 2020, which is the date of our emergency declaration from yesterday. Um, these are intended to supplement our existing personnel rules. The personnel rules remain in effect, but if there's a conflict, uh, these temporary rules will govern. And then the incub we, this is just a CDC definition of incubation period. Um, and then, so we are, uh, the first rule is to allow expanded remote work options. Um, employees desiring to work away from their county workspaces, so we call it remote work or working remotely, shall submit a request to the supervisor. The employee shall describe, or the request shall describe how the employees, and Commissioner Gold pointed out, I have a typo right there and we can fix that. Um, is suitable to remote work, the availability of supplies and equipment, including laptops, cell phones, iPads, tablets, et cetera, and then network adequacy as informed by the county's IT contractor, CCECIC. And then it says decisions by management and department heads is final. Um, so, I mean, does that jive with what the uh, commissioners recall from our discussion yesterday on that topic? Yes. Okay. Then next, uh, workplace safety. This is where um, if the CDC during the COVID-19 emergency uh, requires any specific safety equipment for an employee's position, the county will provide such equipment. If the county does not provide the CDC required equipment, the employee may request to be excused from performing the employee's job functions related to the COVID-19 emergency. So that is that pretty close to what we talked about yesterday? Yes. Okay, good. Um, next thing, essential staff. If state, federal, local government imposes a work from home or other quarantine order that prohibits travel for other than essential work purposes, county department heads shall designate as essential all employees in that department required to maintain levels of service to meet the demands of the department. Each department shall submit a list of essential employees to the director of operations and the director of operations shall ensure that identification is issued to the employees to identify the employee as essential. This identification is intended to allow essential employees to travel to and from work and while on work purposes during times of work from home or other quarantine orders. Um, is that so far so good? I, I guess I'll just keep going unless anybody stops me. That's fine. Uh, next thing is changes in leave rules uh, medically. So this is where I um, reorganized what they had done. They started with a school closure situation, a uh, medically required quarantine, a self quarantine, and then and then something else. And so I just, and it repeated so much, especially the borrowing uh, language. So I've tried to clean it up. I describe each situation. I go through each situation, and then we just put the borrowing, which is a real key to this one, and we just refer to it. So basically, the medically mandated. Here's another typo. Sue Gold, you didn't even catch that one. You're slipping. <laughs> oh, Julie Swift has a whole bunch of typos. We will fix all I don't the need typos. To chime in. Very I'm good. I'm not that good at that anyway. <laughs> so employees who are medically and Matt Hall, you're going to wait till you get a non-typo. Uh, <laughs> employees who are medically mandated to remain at home, knee, at home, <laughs> because they have been exposed to the. This was done kind of in haste, and some it's of it amazing was amazing how fast you got this done. Some of it, well, some of this was done last night. <laughs> so anyway, well, I'm just glad um, we didn't wait until. Yeah, didn't try to do this yesterday. I agree. That, that was, was wise by the board and your suggestion. It's called they, age. They have well, it's just exhaustion. They have been exposed to the coronavirus, and what I've done here, the last thing um, identified coronavirus. I wanted to make sure we call it COVID-19 because the coronavirus, as far as I know, is something a big. Yeah a big thing and so we want to make sure generic. it's just the COVID-19. So it shall be in, so again, employees who are medically mandated, they'll be encouraged to work remotely if allowed by their medical professional. So this is the only one where you'll see that particular subcategory of requirement. Um, if allowed by the medical professional, job is suitable to remote work, remote work resources are available, network can available, accommodate it. Bill. Really? All right, Julie Swift is on it. We'll go Just through it. Just keep reading. We won't interrupt yep. you. If one, or more, and if one or more of the above factors does not allow telework, the employee shall be paced, placed on paid administrative leave. So this is where if you have a medical doctor's note, you're on paid admin leave. It's not sick time. It doesn't count against any of that. Uh, compromised immune system and vulnerable populations. Employees whose immune systems may be compromised for various medical reasons are employees who fall into high-risk vulnerable population and according to public 
health officials need to self-quarantine and maybe we could say are recommended to self-quarantine. I don't know if the board wants to massage uh, that at all. I think that ought to be, yeah, I think that's good. Recommended versus, yeah. okay. Need, you I know, know. who's going to determine that. Good, but is, and I think that we'll, so then um, to avoid risk of contracting the COVID, shall be encouraged to work remotely. And then again, same factors. And then we talk about if remote work, if working remotely is not an option, then they may use any of their accrued leave. So this is when you're not medically stationary, you use your accrued leave, use leave without pay. Uh, if they choose leave without pay, they won't be penalized. And then they can borrow leave for section five below. The borrowing terms were the same in, in all those other contexts. They just repeated request donated leave. Uh, donated leave will only be allowed if the employee has exhausted option three above so borrowing from your own and this was i thought that was what we talked about too so um, that's the kind of a pseudo self-quarantine and then three is the voluntary self-quarantine same kind of thing this is where the, you're not in a vulnerable population you're someone else and you don't have a doctor's requirement but you still on your own personal decision want to self-quarantine will still encourage work remotely under the standard factors. If an employee in voluntary self-quarantine declines to work remotely or working remotely is not an option, then again, same three, use accrued leave, leave without pay or borrow. And what we are not doing on this voluntary one is we're not allowing um, donation from other people because this is voluntary and you're not identified as either being sick or um, or the other, or, or in a, pop, a, a uh, excuse me, vulnerable population. And then uh, school closures, uh, this was the first one in that last uh, thing. I put it down lower. It's, it still is something without choice by the employee typically, um, but if the employee remains home because of a school closure, they shall be encouraged, again, same factors. If they are unable to uh, do that, if it's not an option, then they can use, you know, again, all those things. And because this one is more or less not voluntary, we are still going to allow them to request donated leave. Um, and then number five, again, borrowing advanced leave where authorized an employee may borrow up to five months worth of future leave, either vacation, sick, or a combination not to exceed a total of 80. Uh, the leave shall be paid back at a rate of 50% per month. Uh, for each bank until fully paid back. Payback of this leave shall begin the month after they return. Employees on approved OFLA FIMLA may delay repayment. And this is pretty much um, right out of that thing. And I think we're all in line there. And then the last one, or the last two, employer notification of exposure to risk, medical referral, return to work options. And then if county management has knowledge that an employee may have been exposed to COVID-19, then the employee's department head shall notify the employee within one day uh, once the county has notified the employee, the employee shall be required to notify a medical professional for testing. The employee shall report back to the county if they fall into the in categories in section D above, you know, medically mandated, compromised, voluntary, school closure, et cetera, and then proceed accordingly. And then um, workplace closure, this is kind of the big one. In the event that the county closes its workplace operations, uh, employees will be pla placed, on, placed on administrative paid leave for up to two weeks. And Julie Swift, I wasn't sure exactly what our hazardous conditions rule was, but it says thereafter our personnel rules on hazardous conditions will apply. So, all right, good. So that's, that seemed, I felt like that, you know, after yesterday's discussions and stuff, I felt like that um, summarized uh, the, the board's uh, will and so if that's the case we have prepared an order for the board to consider to adopt and just entertain a motion and further discussion uh, did you have something you want to add please? yeah just one thing um, this is Direct, Julie Swift, uh, payroll and HR you want to say who you are please I just did I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so no John on, on D1 the second little paragraph is you have a one or more of the factors does not allow telework Shouldn't oh did we leave tell did I miss the one thank you yes I I'm not interested in using that phrase. So, thank you. Does not a remote work or remote working working remotely? Sure. Thank you. I thought you were going to work with me on Good the job. typos after. All right. Oh, I I see. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. Very good. Jim Colin and Renee Colin are here as well. They may have joined us in the audience. Thank you for getting here this morning. Much appreciated. So, have, yeah, have you had a chance? I tried to get this draft to you both. Uh, did you have a chance to look at it? No, I'm sorry. I have okay. not. So, well, but I do. But I w would like to just make a comment um, if you're done with this topic. Well, we're still, okay. we haven't done a motion or anything. Okay. We're going to be calling, certainly calling on you. So I move that we approve the uh, temporary personnel rules for COVID-19 with the uh, corrections on the spelling before we actually sign it. And the one addition? Well, yeah. that's already there, so. Okay. Well, I'll second that with discussion, if we can. Um, there was j just a little side note here that there was some uh, conversation yesterday that we might put this into a permanent uh, addition to our temp to our personnel rules down the road. So I'm not asking for that today, but I just want to kind of let the public know and the the other officials here that <coughs> elected officials that this might be something. If I understood correctly from yesterday, that we want to add. Was that your understanding, Commissioner Pash? I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear you on that, but somebody wants to add this to, to the personal? Uh, well, the, eventually this could easily become part of the permanent uh, amendments to our personnel rules. I just wondered if you heard what I heard yesterday, that that was a possible discussion and uh, I did, consideration. I did not hear that. No, I, I did, did not, not hear, hear that. that either. Okay. What, what we did discuss, Commissioner Boyce, was that this is in our personnel rules, this then then that the board would cons would have us uh, submit this to the different unions to see if they wanted to include it as a temporary emergency um, letter of agreement for the different union agreements. Okay, there was a tremendous amount of work went into this, and I want to take advantage of that if it can be beneficial to our whole program down okay. the road. That's all right, all. thank you. So, go ahead. I could see this being added into an emergency plan for the county like we are hopefully going to be working on this year on something like this if we have an emergency in the county that this would automatically be enacted for that for any emergency that the county endures and that and makes that, sense and that might even be a better approach but you're hearing what i'm hearing that we i think uh we're in agreement a lot of work went into this so we need to uh uh, not have to go down this road again a year from now, 10 years from now, if this can be uh, timely and, and stay, stay with a uh, benefit to the whole personnel rule system. So roll, roll call, please. Oops, excuse me. Commissioner I need roll. to amend my motion just a tad. Uh, this applies to the SEIU union and nope. all this this is a oh amendment. we're negotiating this is an with amendment the various to, unions yes, plus this is all of the non uh, represented. Th this employees. is an amendment to our non represented personnel rules and our personnel rules, by way of reminder, apply to our unions when there's no conflict with the CBAs. But what we will be doing with these is to see if the unions want to sometimes there may be a um, a, a provision of a CBA that's different than this and so we're going to um, submit this our, and s we're going to tell the unions hey unions we just adopted this for our general personnel rules please see if you want to you know make it a, an emergency adoption to your CBAs and that would require a separate action by each one of those unions if they want to or if they say that's good enough for us in the regular rules we'll wait to hear from them Okay, so do I need to amend my motion to just say this is no, going to go in the general? No, because the order says that here. Okay, good enough. So the original motion stands as you communicated. Right. Uh, I seconded. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Gold. Aye. Vice Chair Boyce. Yes. Chair Pash. Aye. Motion carried unanimously. Next on the agenda, Commissioner Updates. Commissioner Gold, you get to go first. Okay, I've got several things that need to be discussed. Uh, the first thing, we talked yesterday about a possible hiring of two part-time janitors slash sanitizers to take care of the campus because one of our uh, employees is out sick. And so I would like to have the commissioners okay on that. I don't think I have the right to say, hey, Julie, go and hire those people. So, um, uh, so essentially, I think this would 
go the other way. The, you would get a proposed hire order to hire two people under the emergency rules that we just adopted have, ha, I mean, has, it sounds like you've been in contact with somebody here at the county who knows who you're talking about. That person should ha, submit an order to the board okay. to approve a hire order under our emergency rule where we just suspended the requirement to advertise for people. Right, so and part of the problem is we need to do this yesterday. Okay. So it, Not there today. Is, there is an urgency here. Yes, or there is. an emergency. So how do we, go ahead, um, HR Swift, please. So Julie Swift, payroll and HR, um, I do have an ad prepared that I'm going to put onto the website. Okay. So it'll, um, I'm ready to go with that. And then if so there's people that are we adopted a rule uh, in our emergency yeah. declaration. We waived the requirement to advertise for openings, and we could just directly hire yeah, people. That's how I understood it as well. So, are there people out there that are aware that are ready to be hired? That's that's I, that's what I'm trying to get from Commissioner Gold. Who have you talked to who thinks they have people they know? Ashley Summer said she has Facebook contacts that she could look out to. You may have contacts out there. Uh, I mentioned it at my fire department meeting last night because I, I suspect there's a lot of people out there that are unemployed. Well, we, we still need them to, f all we have done is suspend the requirement that we advertise before hiring. They'll still need to fill out an application. Right, And right. they'll still need to uh, do a, you know, background screening. Right. Um, but those can both be done very quickly. So uh, what I would recommend, Commissioner Gold, is you tell whoever you think needs to know that have them get in here and fill out an application. Okay. But, but Commissioner Gold is trying to get board approval here too today. Is well, right? she, do you have any persons or are you just saying Summer knows people? Well, what I'm saying is I want your approval to actually go out and hire two people immediately. Through our department? With, yes. Okay. Going through the proper channels yes. with an application and a background check. So typically, uh, thank you, typically the, um, the board adopts the hire orders. Are you saying you want to delegate the hiring authority uh, to somebody else? Or do you want us to bring back, usually you know we have an order and it says we're going to hire right, this person right. at this rate. And you guys see those and you say, yeah. Um, are you telling us during this emergency you just want staff to go do this without bringing them to the board? Or are you just saying... Well, they could bring it to the board. My understanding is we may be having several meetings. And that's a good point. Um, I just, <laughs> we need to do it yesterday. So, yeah, Chet's, Chet's overloaded. Um, okay, and I'm going to ask you to consider on making a motion, and I assume we could do that today with, without the public notice and not being on our agenda. Correct. We can add this topic to the agenda. The, it's fine. Thank you. And I'm going to encourage you to make your motion to have uh, HR Director Swift take care of that. Is that okay? That's fine. I move that we... Uh, well, you had something, just, Well, I just wanted to know. My my understanding is these people would work in Chet's department for the most part. Exactly. So I think what you could do is you could make a motion to delegate to HR Director Swift and um, is 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 Mr. Brewer still an interim? He is. So I would just say you delegate to interim interim uh, building and facilities maintenance director Brewer and HR director Swift uh, the ability to hire uh, and are these people going to be temporary what's temporary. the yeah, temporary and, and is it but are they full-time temporary is part -time. It, no part-time okay so to hire up to no more than two part-time temporary uh, workers during the COVID uh, situation and and then bring the hire orders to you retroactively yes I think that's fine very important. good. I think we understand that. I think staff can understand that if you just say so moved and... Okay, I just, move that we do as uh, Council Huddle suggested. Perfect. Is there a second? Commissioner Pash? I'll second. Okay. So discussion. Um, when we, I, th I think it might be wise not to define what part-time is just because it is on a day-to-day -day basis. We know it's not full-time. Uh, would you agree with that? I would agree with that. Okay. To be de hours to be and days to be determined be by facilities. And it's well, important that we say temporary because we still have right. our employees that are out sick. Right. So. And one more point of discussion. Do we want to look at uh, other employees that may be part-time or would that be automatic? I, I, think, Swift? I think that's automatic, but I don't think we have any. Or, no. What, we don't have any? We have, like, 
one part time. Yeah. Person. So and we have we have the people at the fairgrounds. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, but. there. So we can contact them. Yeah. And, and good. And I I want to, one more point of discussion. We're having a, a few employees that are volunteering their time and doing this same same work and effort. Um, so we don't want that to go unnoticed. We'll bring it up at another time and uh, uh, send gratitude. So any more discussion? Yeah, I've got several. We've got to vote oh, on this. Oh, we need to vote. Yeah. Roll call, please. Moved and seconded. Commissioner Gold. Aye. Vice Chair Boyce. Yes. Chair Pash. Aye. Motion carried unanimously. Okay, I've got a couple of other things here that I need to discuss. Um, and I, I just want you to know where I'm coming from. Um, Jeremy uh, said that we had a website where everybody could go to to get the most update information. And I think what we need to do is add to that website what are the resources available for elderly shut-ins. I am going to be having a meeting down in South County on some of these very issues tomorrow. Um, they need shopping. They need meals. They need medical appointments. Uh, I've been in contact with the senior center down there. They've put out over 500 meals. The food bank has been putting out snack packs. I emailed her today to get maybe an update of what's happening. And she's in contact with all the food banks in the county. So I will give you an update there. What are the resources for children? I think that needs to be on our website also. Meals, daycare, who can they call? And possibly even having a county number that people can call if they're in need of these resources. I think I said something about shopping angels. This is kind of a national trend right now that people are doing. Some of the younger people are getting out and shopping for older people. And in these times, I just think that we need to pull together, not only as a county, but as a nation. So I can get more information on that. This thing has just been coming so fast that I don't have all everything together yet. Um, also, uh, several people have reported that they're having allergic reactions from the spraying in the halls and would prefer that uh, the seats and the counters and stuff be wiped down rather than sprayed. And I know Chet's in overload as far as not having the time to do all this. So we need to have some remedies. and. Um, I'm proposing that maybe the department Mr. takes... Mr. Gold, forgive me for interrupting. Commissioner Pash, you remember back in November I was on the phone, you had to remind me to mute my phone? We're getting some background noise, sir. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Sorry. Okay, so I don't believe in just saying, hey, do this. I think we have to have some remedies to this. So uh, I think each department could take care of wiping down their surfaces. Uh, I already talked to... Beth Barker Hidalgo over in the uh, COVID building, Colvin building, and she is taking care of that because we didn't have the janitorial services to do that. We've got the veterans building down in South County that one of our employees took care of. Um, he's not available, so I've got a call into them, and unfortunately, Tony's off, so it's hard to get in touch with them, but hopefully they'll be able to do something of the same. Once we get some part-time people here, we can have things calm down. I did talk to uh, our uh, Cherie Ward about some of this, the spraying especially, and she says she didn't think it was a real good idea to have that going on. She thought wiping the surfaces down was a better thing. Also, I went to a fire meeting last night after all the other meetings yesterday, and some interesting things came uh, to light. Um, it was reported that there's been some price gouging here in the county. I'll give you a specific, and I'm not going to name names, but uh, they were charging $68 for a uh, small box of toilet paper instead of $14. So um, not good. Also, I heard that some of the merchandise in our largest department store here in the county. They were changing all of the items all around so there were no prices listed underneath so people could actually check on those things. 
Now, I don't know whether that's on purpose or not, but again, I think we need to all be pulling together. Uh, I was able to solve a problem for a little lady who was going to have her electric turned off. Brent Bischoff was wonderful in working with this gal. So these are some of the things we have to do to work together. Um, I will be talking to uh, our emergency manager possibly about getting some of these things on the website, especially after I get together with the South County people tomorrow. So that's it. I think I've, oh, one other thing. I have been organizing this volunteer thing where all these volunteer groups were supposed to come and report on their volunteers, what their groups do, how many hours they put in, and that sort of thing. I've got approximately over 30 groups that are going to be coming. Obviously, we can't have them here in the room. So my proposal is that I get them to do a tiny video, about three minutes, and we show it. Now, I'm going to have to say to them, I don't know whether we're going to have to have the time to show these videos, but I want the volunteers to know how important they are in this county. We could not run without our volunteers. So um, with your permission, does that sound like a good idea? I think it's a wonderful idea myself. Commissioner Pash? Oh, I agree. OK, so I'm not sure whether we're going to have time for 15 presentations during one of our meetings, but I will let them know that we're not going to forget about it. We'll do the presentations, but maybe not at the same meeting. Well, you were going to schedule uh, routinely, I think, originally, weren't you? I was going to schedule for two meetings, April 1st and April 15th. Okay. And my guess is <laughs> that's not going to happen as it was planned. So let's just say there's the only thing that's permanent in this life is change. So get over it. OK, that's it. I've got it. So we just had uh, Public Health Administrator Ward join us. Did you need to offer something to the public? You got to fix that microphone, please. <laughs> I just want to make clarification in regards to the disinfectant. I'm not saying not to disinfect. I am saying that we can maybe cut down on it a little bit, uh, maybe department heads or somebody. Because I even noticed it was pretty heavy in my office yesterday. Um, and some people may be allergic to that type of uh, disinfectant. So I'm just saying we just use more caution when we're disinfecting, maybe not as heavy as it's been, uh, just to kind of recognize that because um, that's just a really big it's, it's, concern. If I may, it's interesting because I didn't say anything, but man, yeah, a couple times it's been very strong and I thought, okay, this is just part of the territory. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we still want to disinfect. Yeah. I just don't think it needs to be as heavy as it's been. Um, I just, I, I do know, I want to be very conscientious of how people are reacting also to the disinfectant. Great. So. Commissioner Gold? So do you agree wiping surfaces, or, uh, surfaces down is probably a better approach than spraying or? Well, here's the thing. I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor and I can't really make that advice. I mean, that'd be a good question for a health officer. So I could run that by a health officer in okay, regards to that, that would be one. Good. Let's, yeah. Let's do this. Um, so. What you just said, toning it down a little bit, might yeah. be the only combination we need in addition to, yes, uh, the, the hand wiping that's the going hand wiping on. Is, I think they've been really best. thorough. I mean, it, your it hand wiping is really a, a, a good thing to do. I mean, but the constant going around and spraying while people are there and stuff, I know that can really be um, heavy contact with that disinfectant. So we just want to be a little more cautious on that. Fair enough. Do you have anything additional? Nope. That was it. What time did you get here this morning? I, d I can't recall. <laughs> <laughs> I can't recall and hit the boots on the ground already. So, but I did want to at least kind of clarify that a little bit. Would you stay here for just a minute? Commissioner Pash, you're next. Uh, well, I just want to also comment on uh, Ms. Ward's uh, comments. Uh, during my time in the military, guess what they taught us? A bottle of bleach and some hot water, and it lasts for a long time yeah. on surfaces and it kills 99.9% .9 of everything. So um, a, good, a good washing with some bleached out water is uh, as good as a lot of these disinfectants. That's my opinion. As far as uh, personal comments, because of my health situation, uh, I really haven't prepared much. I've actually been doing a lot of R&R &R in my bed. Um, and uh, 
So I really don't have a lot on that. I will say I think uh, next week I will do a, uh, um, if we have a meeting next week, I will do a presentation on what uh, happened at NACO. Um, there were some great things that did happen at NACO. And since I've been back, I've been in contact with some people in Washington, and I may have some um, really, really good news on the road trip. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Pash. Um, Administrator Ward, I'll wait maybe to fill in a couple blanks here. The, the, the last time I heard the governor at a uh, phone conference, I was taking notes like crazy, but I just want to give a little shout out to the state and the, um, it's called the Corona Emergency Coordinating Center. And she basically put three people in charge of all the data going through this group. And I wrote so fast, I may not have the names. I'm familiar with two of them. One of them is um, Andrew Phelps, the emergency management coordinator, so he is one of the three. These three people have tremendous credentials. And the reason I want to highlight this is because, um, yeah, now we've lost three people in Oregon, and to have all the data go through them, the other one I think is going to be very beneficial. Uh, you might know uh, Harrington, that was uh, he's been in the governor's office for some time, but his background is also in emergency management. He was very uh, tuned into the H1N1 eight or nine years ago. And the third one is uh, Baden. I didn't get first names, but uh, he's with the Oregon State Health Authority. So those three are collecting uh, data every day, running a very unified office. I just think that uh, the governor's decision to do this was really timely and prudent. And uh, uh, from a small county, I just really am grateful. So did you want to add anything to that, or is there anything updated? It's fairly new. Uh, no, nothing further at this time. I'm, I'm working with uh, the state right now in regards to... You are familiar with this coordinating center? Yes. Okay, yes, great. Yes, I am. So the only thing uh, on commissioner reports that I have, um, if, uh, Eric, if you could come to the main screen, I just want to remind the public, uh, the 15 days, now we're in day four. It's amazing how much changes in any given day nationwide and certainly in our state. I did highlight yesterday that despite we've lost um, over 100 to the disease in the country, 77,000 as of yesterday this time, maybe a little bit later, had recovered. So that's just a stat that it brings us good news. You did hear me mention South Korea that um, they're on their way uh, of leveling out on the, in terms of the daily uh, diagnosis and, and additional cases. Uh, but I just want to read this, uh, listen to and follow the directions of your state and local authorities. So uh, if, if any of our seniors in particular are listening out there, we have encouraged you to stay home. Commissioner Gold mentioned uh, the Sharing Angels. There's another... Uh, shopping Angels. Is it Shopping Angels? Right. Yeah, and the, another one is invis InvisibleHands.com. Um, and they're, in, they're available nationwide and helping folks get supplies and so with our average age being 56 or median age uh, if, if people are watching and need help they can contact our office um, it, and this is where it's already changed if you feel sick stay home we're asking everybody to stay home unless they absolutely need to go out if they have questions you know back to take your own temperature that's one of the first signs that can possibly give you some good information on on your health and so you can, I don't need to read the rest of them, but um, um, just stay tuned. And uh, as I said, we're in day four, and um, then it goes to uh, do our part to slow down the spread, slow down the spread. Um, we want to get our curve leveled out in the country, especially in Oregon, and we're watching very closely what happens here in Curry County. Um, I mentioned the president in my opening little comment there. Um, to see the federal government come together, the president declaring the, uh, the War Act uh, so that he has the, the other side of the aisle encourage him to uh, absolutely take that authority. And so there's just a real level of teamwork uh, at the national level. You see it at the state level. And it's just, uh, it's really refreshing. And I think you're seeing it here. We're having our 2 o'clock meeting today. Um, if anybody is hearing me and has not uh, had, a, had a notice of this meeting, you are welcome to join us. Um, Assessor Colon is going to co-chair with me and we're just 
uh, going to talk a little bit about what we did yesterday. Uh, the departments are wondering at what point should they shut their doors and work uh, strictly without the public exposure. And I just need all the information. I think we need all the information and input and insight that we can get our hands on. And there's some people who have been here a long time, and I think that's going to be really beneficial to our citizens. And I think it shows that Curry County is not lagging behind on our responsibility here. Uh, all of our elected officials are working with other counties and learning everything they possibly can. Come on up, uh, Clerk Cohen, if you would, please. Thanks, Yuri. Renee Colon, County Clerk, thank you for letting me um, add a comment. I want to tag on to what Commissioner Boyce is saying. And working with my colleagues, county clerks throughout the state, there have been um, some office shutdowns. There have been um, limited access to the counter. And I would hope that I can get uh, respectfully asked from the commissioners if we can maybe have what, like Tillamook County is doing, the commissioners are meeting with their leadership team every morning just to give a quick update on where we're at. So if there's any way you all can figure out a way to make that work, I know everyone is extremely busy and time is running out for, for a lot of us to get what we need to get done. But if there's any way we can maybe do such a, a conference call first thing in the morning, just giving us a current update on where we're at and if there's shutdowns that need to have happen or just kind of help us with what departments should be doing um, at this point. Um, many counties, like I said, are, uh, I think Lake County uh, commissioners completely shut down the courthouse for a week, and that just happened recently. So um, I would love to have that kind of dialogue and update um, so that I can also communicate to our citizens what's going on with our office. Are, are you, do I hear you saying you would prefer an early morning meeting? I would. I would. Know, in my lodge, I used to have a staff meeting at 7 o'clock, and it was so productive to hear from everybody and get there. Or just first thing in the morning, just dial up and for five minutes just get an update from, from our leadership team. Uh, they're, uh, like I said, our colleagues, uh, the clerks around the state are having type of, this type of com com communication with their leadership team. So can and you make you that recommendation that later today? Yes, yeah, sure. Commissioner Pash, uh, is morning good for you? Are we talking 8 o'clock? Is that a No, I think right, first thing in the morning, whatever your shift starts. Okay. I don't think you need to come in early. What um, would be most convenient for your for your department, for example? For you? Yeah, first thing in the morning before 10 o'clock. Before 10 o'clock. Commissioner Pash, did you hear that okay? Well, I heard that, yeah. So you're wanting to have a phone conversation with everyone uh, every morning? Well, we're not saying that yet, I don't think. Right, just just think about, you know, if there's a way that we can communicate with the leadership team, just do a phone call in the morning, just updating us on where we're at. Great. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Gold? Um, I'm, I'm fine with that, but we've got to make sure that we get out the facts, whatever they are. Okay. So, um, and as it relates here to commissioner's meetings, um, at some point, we might be meeting by phone. I'm not making that recommendation yet, but I, I'd like to have the commissioners, the board, think about how that might be structured and if it's a good uh, decision at some point, even if it's perhaps necessary. Uh, I, I don't think we need to worry a lot about it today, but uh, you know, we're going to know a lot more Monday morning and what uh, has what comes down the path over the weekend. So, Commissioner Gold? I think what we have to have at this point is some way to do that, make sure that we have that path to do it, and also with the department heads, some way to set up some sort of a phone conference, whether you're at home or whether you're here in your office or whatever. So not necessarily everybody has to be in this room. So that's what I'm thinking. Clerk Colin, did you have something you wanted to add to that? <laughs> Just one of my emails that I received from Jackson County, it states that they are canceling all their BOC meetings and doing things through the phone. So I don't know, oh. you know what, what the processes are, what legally, that's a county council does not, I think, input on what you can and can't do, but. Could you give us just a little more detail on that? Or maybe we don't need any more detail. No, ju I, I'm just seeing that um, for Jackson County, all in-person meetings are canceled, including BOC meetings as okay. of today. So the thing is, we've got to have the uh, technology to in place to, to do communicate. that. Communicate. We're gonna. We're still gonna have to. The, did you say they are doing by phone? I'll and again, this is just an email I'm reading, okay, so I'll I think you should out. reach that's, out to Jackson County a, and find out exactly what's going on. That's a terrific heads up. Thank you. So uh, to be prepared, I, I'm big into that. Maybe we need to talk to Phil and say what is the process we need to go through in order to be ready for this. Um. Yeah, because that's a, there, there's another good example. If somebody else wanted to call in right now, uh, we do I, we do have 
system that's free that we one can one person do. can just call in yeah. right now so maybe we can uh, your idea of talking to phil we might do you want me to do that i will do that would you, you're talking about go to meeting commissioner boyce one go. of those kind of things right. Is it, right yeah and and uh, commissioner pash uh do you have anything you want to add to that any part of that discussion well i just know that there are um there are websites that you can type in to like to do the conference call thing you get that number and you all call into it you can have a you know a commissioner meeting through that kind of a number yeah it's not that complicated no and it is available and yeah go to meeting might be a good option well, well you have one today scheduled am i correct yeah it's, it's it's a real simple program yeah so you can do that with your commissioner meetings the same way and we'd be having you call in on that so we could have multiple call-ins. Uh, Assessor Cullen? If you, uh, Jim Cullen, Curry County Assessor, if you do get to the point to where you're going to be conducting BOC meetings by phone, it seems like it would be a good idea to have at least one of you here uh, so it can be filmed and, and still be online for the, for the people to hear, you know, the, at least the, the chair. things that you're wrestling with and in, in, in your decision making processes i uh really like to thank uh county clerk renee colin for for bringing in some of this information no, from, from other counties uh it, it especially the part about where there are other counties where their county commissioners are meeting with their management teams you know maybe as much as daily we, we may decide we don't need something as much as daily but um it certainly i i know i could use more information from some of the experts from our our health care professionals and our emergency manager uh, because it's hard to keep up with everything that's going on just by watching the news or reading the newspaper yeah, you it, don't thing, know what's true and what's not things are happening so quickly um so i appreciate your consideration of that concept uh we'll we'll get that kicked off this afternoon maybe we'll have the opportunity to to discuss you know how often managers feel like they they would like to meet uh, one of the things i'd like to see us discuss this afternoon is i, I would like to have uh, somebody from i.t there at that meeting so we can discuss working remotely and and so other department heads know how to set that up but one final thing that just occurred to me in listening to some of the things you have going on this morning, so many times in county government, in, in order to get something done, uh, you need the three commissioners to agree to it. And as quickly as things are moving, I'm wondering if the commissioners might uh, consider selecting a point person in case there's some things that need to get done right away that could go one commissioner could give approval on um, until you have your next commissioner's meeting to discuss it. Uh, it, it might help expedite emergency actions if there are any that we need to take. Council Huddle, since we, hang, hang on, Commissioner, one second. Council Huddle, didn't, wouldn't that be covered in our emergency declaration from yesterday? It was, it was it was not actually we did not delegate to any individual commissioner ability to make any particular decision without the other two commissioners that would be a, a separate act we'd need to do what the board did do was delegate to the emergency management coordinator the local public health official and the sheriff as well as the director of operations to make decisions on these emergencies within their purview but um, it did not delegate to any individual board uh, member any authority to make decisions and do directions. But we still have liaison responsibilities. That has not changed. Liaison responsibilities still exist. I don't think those are decision-making responsibilities, though. Is I think what I heard uh, Director Cole, or excuse me, Assessor Colin ask is that because of the issues with meetings, timing, scheduling, um, you know, there would be, it might make it easier if individual commissioners uh, were delegated authority to actually make decisions give direction uh, that kind of thing commissioner pash uh, i personally would not uh, vote for that uh, i think it's it's in the best interest of of our constituents that we remain intact as a board as it was set up 
through this county, um, and that's just my personal thought. Excuse me. Yes. Um, I think I'm going to agree with Commissioner Pash simply because we are all available by phone, and if we don't happen to be in the same room, um, I still think that we could make a decision by phone. So that's uh, my. Technically, you could even make a decision by email. Or email. That would have to go and through. Go ahead, Commissioner Pash. And the other thing is, I mean, if, if that were to change where one of us became incapacitated, hospitalized, those kind of things, then yes, we could look at it at that time and make sure that everything is set up legally, uh, you know, through Council Huddle and his advice just to make sure that we're following the letter of the law on that. Uh, but at this time, I think because we're all available and we're all of sound mind, I'd like to leave the way it is. That's, again, that's just my personal vote. Council Huddle, so if we're going to go. Uh, in a joint uh, email decision, that has to go through who? Director of Operations, I presume. When you say it has to go through Director of Operations, what what do you? We can't email one another. Right. So what you would, what I would think is here's how I would see the scenario happen: <coughs> an issue is brought to the attention of any one of you individually, or it could be brought to another elected official or a department head. Then the question would be, this looks like we need board decision. How do we make that happen? I think the protocol would be to have John Jesuit, you know, direct, he, you know, and, and yes, if the director of operations was here, we would, she would be the, the central point to organize the email meeting or what have you. Um, but I think essentially it would be you know, here, commissioners, this is a decision for you to make by email by these votes. I, I do, I do think that um, we could run into some public meeting and records issues there. I know we're in an emergency. The key with that is we can always ratify. So w we could make these decisions by email or by phone and ex and act on them. And then instead of having a meeting every time we need to do this, we could come back at a regular meeting and go through the decisions that were made by these interim measures and ratify them and say, we ratify, ratify. So we could, we could make our meeting schedule more regular once or twice a week, and then we could do these interim telephone call votes or um, email votes and, and then ratify those. That, that would be, I think, a really good way to do it where we have flexibility, but we can still show that we're following uh, the rules and the laws on public information. Commissioner Gold. Uh, I agree with that. I think we need to be flexible and to uh, Commissioner Pasha's concern if we become incapacitated still if two are capacitated then then that'll take care of it. If there's agreement. <laughs> well anything else? I, I just want the public to know I'll be here every day. I don't think I have any choice but to I, I think my authority as one commissioner, I'm not here to make arbitrary decisions to the contrary, but I am here to learn and provide and adjust and encourage support. Uh, that's what I see the county commissioner's job. And so I just want the public to know, yes, I will be here every day. And I, yeah, anything else? No. Nope. Commissioner Pash? I think that's all for me, sir. Thank you. Have a have a question. Yes, sir. I've heard I've I was working on that other project and so I missed some of the beginning of this meeting. I heard from some people that we'll have a meeting this afternoon. Is that gonna be a board meeting this afternoon or what is happening this afternoon? We are collecting uh and being available to all the department heads and other elected officials, having a meeting similar to what we had yesterday afternoon with the various individuals and uh for example, uh, downstairs is shut down today. Uh, the employees are there, but the doors are locked. And uh, we've had some other departments say, hey, what, what should I be doing? What's the general consensus here? We're trying to include as many people as we can and uh, certainly subject to some of the emails and, and what we're learning from other counties and just preparing. So is that going to be here in this room? So, so is that going to be a board of commissioners meeting? No. 
Who's who's we? Uh, I'm be, co-chairing. Weekend. I'm co-chairing. We can that meeting, though. You can call in. There are no decisions are going to be made, and your input would be invaluable, in my opinion. So it'll be a public meeting. Anytime there's anytime there's a two commissioners deliberating, talking about county business, that's a public meeting. Whether it's a workshop, whether you're making a decision or not, so we should put out some kind of notice about this. What, what time will it be? Two o'clock, it's a phone conference. Thank you, two o'clock phone conference in this room. So then if the other commissioners can't be there, then I'll make a report back to them or Assessor Colin can. Sure, who's invited on the phone conference? Basically anybody that wants to be there, but primarily, do you want to give a comment, Assessor Colin, anybody that's a department head or elected official? So I... Uh, yeah, Jim Cullen, County Assessor. I, I, I sent out an email to all elected officials and department heads. I presume all of you got it. I haven't had a chance to read all my emails uh, today. Last Fine. night at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Um, and, and inviting everybody to come to what I had envisioned was one of our management type meetings, but uh, really, you know, ideally we would set up something to where all three of the commissioners could attend. Uh, and, and so if we, if we can allow for that, uh, if it has to be a public meeting where somebody who wants to listen in, a newspaper wants to listen in, that they could call in and, and listen to the deliberation, I, I don't have an issue with that. So is that possible to send out a notice of the meeting? Yes. Okay, so I think that's probably what we need to do, send out a notice of the meeting so that all three commissioners can be involved. I think. You probably need input, and, and all commissioners need to hear what's said. Well, and the public. Bureaucracy, and the public. Bureaucracy prevails again, so we may not be able to do it today. Why not? You're saying we can't? Let's just send yes. out notice of the meeting. Pardon me? Let's just send out notice of the meeting if, if we can do that. I, I don't have an issue with that. Well, my preference would be to have uh, all three commissioners have an opportunity to contribute and listen in. Well, that's why he's going to send out a notice of an emergency meeting. Are we going to use the term emergency, Council? Of course, yeah. Okay. And then uh, do one thing. Under the law, don't we have to use the word emergency? We will, we will use the word emergency. It's the best word to use in these circumstances. And then we will also explain during the meeting why we could not provide the minimum of 24 hours notice because of the emergency Good. conditions. So that's, that's how we do it. Does that put a spin on, not a spin, but a concern that uh, something new has happened that has created this to, the, uh, of course, between now and two o'clock, that could happen. Well, so, something new has happened. Busy. I mean, we have the War Powers Act. We have new information from both um, EEOC as well as there's been changes to FEMLA at the state level. So um, there is new information. Let's, let's take a pause for just a moment. Uh, in our audience is uh, Juvenile Director Lang. Did you have something you wanted to offer today, this morning? Uh, Welcome. <laughs> Assessor Cohen, you can come right back in just a moment. No, I, uh, on the top floor over there, trying to take care of all the court and legal stuff, and I know I was talking with Stacy at the DA's office, and uh, yeah, we're really not sure what we have the right to do, what we don't, how to protect our employees. Um, we're not sure what directions everybody else has taken and want to really make sure we're on the same same level that we have authority to do what we're looking to do and we and we're not sure what to do what are you looking to do well I mean we're not sure as far as employee wise I mean do I have the ability to you know ask somebody not to be at work if there are conditions that we're concerned of do I have the right to lock our door to the public and you know be on the phone you know what services are we able to offer or not offer? Good point. Uh, so, Director Lang, were you were you planning on calling in this afternoon? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, and I know uh, um, Mr. Spansale is out today, but he is having Stacy. She plans on being in my office, and we'll both be on the phone. At the meeting. And I think Assessor Collins and my vision was uh, just to take notes as fast as we could write down and uh, just interact with with uh, and, you know there, there's. There's over 100 years of experience here with some of our elected people and uh, a lot of experience in Curry County. And so uh, I didn't intend to do a lot of talking, but a lot of writing. And then I wanted to report back to the commissioners and see where that took us uh, for future 
get-togethers and yes give those people a chance just to to express even vent a little bit and say hey this is the issue I'm dealing with what would you do if you're in my position how can you help how can we all help combine efforts and absolutely team up I think it's imperative exactly and we have our employees all looking at us you know when we walk in the door in the morning they're all looking at us like what what's the plan you know what what's coming down you know all they're getting right now is kind of social media stuff that some might be oh factual and some might be not so I I find that it's you know our responsibility to get accurate information <coughs> and pass it on to them on what we're doing to you know keep them safe and, and what can we offer so we just adopted we just adopted the rules on leave fantastic so if any employees feel they want to self quarantine you know they can they'd be encouraged to work at home and if the rule says that if they um, if they can't do work remotely through either a tablet or something, and uh, then they have to use actual leave. So, um, if they have a medical symptomatic, or you know, the whole we just adopted the whole thing we talked about. That's a I think that's a good place to start. But then, and then when you ask if you can close your doors and make appointments only, uh, certainly you have the ability to you know say public meetings by appointment only. Uh, we're still keeping social distances and those kind of things. I don't, I don't think there's, um, you know, the, the board has not ordered a shutdown of the county, if that's a question. Um, so really, I... So you think this meeting is, wouldn't potentially be productive? No, I think the meeting would be productive, but you know, I, I'm just trying to give Director Lang some feedback now. Um, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, the assessor has already made the decision that you're asking whether he can close his, you know, building to the public, and he's done so and said appointment only and those kind of things. So I think that question's already answered, um, you know, as far as your ability to do that. Well, do we have a, do we have a motion or do we need to just go ahead with a public notice? I think we got direction from the board that JJ will put out the notice to the usual sources and say we're having a meeting at two o'clock here. And we'll offer the uh, the call-in information. Sure. To be to be included with that. Economic Director Madison, did you have something? Kirk Cullen, something else? I see a question on Matt's face here. No, oh, Matt Hall. The Matt Hall. Press. Oh, excuse me. You might have to ask up there. At the, you might have to get on the microphone so we can hear. Great. Now, you want to do it now? You can, sure. Um, Matt Hall, Craig County Reporter, Middle Point Herald, and Port Orford News. Um, in the midst of all of our troubles and, uh, and all of the great work that is being done, I would like to suggest that Curry County might also have an opportunity here. There are many places which have it much worse than us. There are going to be people and in industries out there that will be reevaluating and looking at a place they might go that has clean air, opportunity, and safety. There might be an effort to start reaching out and identifying those people and industries now. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, economic development. Director Madison took notes, and she's probably already on that a little bit. Um, Assessor Cullen, and then Penny Hudson. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, with regards to however often we may have a management type meeting, um, we might look to other counties that are already doing this daily and, and seeing what processes they're, they're following for doing their public notices and, and whatnot. So maybe you could have your staff check that out for us. Will do. Ms. Hudgens, did you have something? Good morning, Penny Hudgens, Building and Planning. I just wanted to let everybody know, and I'm not sure if Becky Crockett came back by yesterday and let you guys know, but we have, due to the enormous amount of walk-in traffic that we get, we have closed our doors to that traffic, and we're only allowing contact via phone, email, or other methods rather than having people come in. Um, if somebody wants to drop off some plans, we have set aside a bucket that they can put them in and then we can disinfect them 
um, for a couple of days before we even touch them. So I think. Uh, I yes. Go ahead, Commissioner Pack. I just wanted to make sure. I'm sure you've done it, but I just wanted to make sure that you put notices on on the doors that are closed that you are open for business, and, and this is how to proceed. Yes, we've done that, and I've also put uh, that information on our web pages. Thank you so much. I knew you did. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. And I think uh, Director Crock was planning to call in today. Uh, I know she's going to be here a little bit later. I'm not okay. exactly sure what her plans are. Um, I think she was supposed to be here about one o'clock today. Terrific. So okay. what might make sense at this meeting would be to, and I've saw one from, I think, Tillamook County, where it, there was a press release issued that said, here's the changes we made. We're, as Commissioner Pash said, we're posting on doors. But if we put out a press release saying, you know, Curry County is still open for business on a modified basis, you know, in-person contact is, you know, limited, but you can still make appointments and you can still drop things off and, uh, you know, the, the doors are still open, something like that. But, uh, and, and then have each department say what they're doing and then just put that out there. But that to me would be a good topic for the meeting this afternoon. Uh, that's on my notes, but you said a much more, uh, much better detail. So that, that'll come up today. Uh, Clerk Cullen, did you have something else? I disagree with what Pavel said. Okay, terrific. Um, so I just want to be told we don't want to be told we can't have a meeting. We this is an important time, and so I want to follow through and see how we can help. And I think some good things are going to come out of it, and we're going to move forward. Uh, Miss Madison, you sure you didn't have something? Thanks for being here. Okay, uh, Director Lang, you're okay. Welcome. So. And so you'll be bringing your summary of the steps you're taking for your limited services, et cetera. We're going to be putting out a, a press release telling the public what each department's doing to still give services during these times on a limited basis. But council had that'll be after this afternoon's meeting. Yeah, but, okay. but what we'll need is each department head to bring that to the meeting Good. so we can assimilate it into a one document. Okay. Director Madison. Commissioner? Yes, go ahead, Commissioner Pat. I just... Uh, it's 10 after 10 now. I have a 10.30 doctor's appointment. I'm just wondering if there's anything more for me. No, but thank you. We're, we're going to adjourn very, very shortly here. I think probably after right. Director Madison. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Commissioner. You too. You're well. So every day this week we have been releasing uh, to our businesses, our chambers, our city administrators, uh, the commissioners and regional partners, um, industry small business and economic impact updates uh, related to the current situation uh, it is on the website it's also on the uh, curryoem.com um, so if you wanted me to send you that link matt so you can see uh, what we're producing or i can put you on the distribution list okay and then also as far as uh, the management meeting goes if we're going to be put in a position where we're sharing documents or screenshots I sent you the link so that we could have video available and it's actually something we've paid for for the next year so everybody's uh, able to use that if we need to uh, what was the other thing you wanted me to address is that zoom summer or what is no, it's go to meeting go to meeting okay and it has video I've had two people suggest zoom as well I don't know that program they anyway I just have one question summer as you're reaching out to these businesses, I know that uh, ex-commissioner uh, George Rhodes talked about yesterday businesses not being able to get to the SBA website to fill out forms to get relief. Uh, are we making that available to the businesses so they can get through that process easily? Yeah, so the initial worksheets... I can speak to you have been Johnny on the spot on that, like immediately. The worksheets that um, we needed to have submitted uh, to make our case um, the, that uh, threshold's been met, and so now we're in a position of waiting for the uh, emergency declaration to be submitted and accepted by the state, and then you will see in turn uh, the links for eligibility for our local businesses to apply. So if you go onto the SBA site now, you're not going to see that link. It should probably be listed sometime today. And I've got to say, despite not being as prepared as we would hope to be, for the circumstances overall i uh, really appreciate everybody stepping up or working together i know emotions are high but um this is where we all need to um you know be a little more proactive less reactive and also uh, just real quick i did recommend that commissioner boyce reach out to aoc and see what the collaborative uh,
counties are doing for implementing um, shutdown services and uh, limited availability uh, physically, I think the more that we can communicate that to the public, the better off we are. Well said. Okay, that's it. Emergency Management Thanks. Coordinator Dumeyer, do you have something? So again, Jeremy Dumeyer, Emergency Manager for the County. I uh, just heard Summer speak about the SBA, wanted to inform you that while Oregon yet does not have the uh, SBA in place, Curry County is eligible thanks to California and being directly adjoining. That information has been added to the uh, Facebook page and is being uploaded to the OEM, Curry OEM website right now. So we are eligible for SBA as of now, thanks to California. One question. One question, is that uh, just because of Del Norte? Correct. So would Jackson County, uh, Siskiyou County as well? I do not know uh, in terms of Siskiyou County. I don't know if that affects Jackson, Josephine County or not. I just know from an email I just received from Joseph Murray that we are eligible thanks to California. But we want to follow through with our own program as well, I, I assume. I mean, we, we are eligible for funding and at that point I'm happy. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Anything else? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.